If I can get everybody to um, join us in prayer this morning for our corporate prayer, make your way to the sanctuary, amen, settle yourselves, get your mind on Jesus, hallelujah. We are expecting today. The word is expectation. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. Expectation. It's the breeding ground for miracles. Glory to God. How many of you guys expecting today? Amen. We ladies know about expectation. Amen. Praise God. We start preparing. Hallelujah. So prepare. Let's get ourselves prepared as we uh, go before the Lord this morning. He certainly is good and has been good to us. Just by virtue of you being here lets me know he's been good to you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, let's just bless the Lord this morning. Lift our hands unto him from whom all blessings flow. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory this morning. We are thankful unto you, O Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for waking us up, blowing within us the breath of life so that we can live to see another day on this side to glorify your name and to praise you. Lord God, we have confidence in you, and this is the confidence that we have, that if we ask you anything according to your will, you hear us. And since we know that you hear us, we have the petitions that we desire of you. Your word tells us in the name of Jesus to enter into your gates with thanksgiving into your courts with praise to bless the wonderful name of Jesus. At all times, your praises shall continually be in our mouths. Oh, Lord God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, as we launch out in prayer, we give you praise and glory for your word tells us to pray ye one for another and to offer all manner of prayer, supplications in the spirit, intercessions and giving of thanks for all men. And we thank you, Father, for those who are in authority. So therefore, we pray for this great nation. We call this nation blessed because you are the God over it. And we are your people that you have called out for your inheritance. And Father, as we pray for all those who stand in the imminent place of authority, we thank you for the anointing upon the leaders of our nation, just not our nation, but nations around the world. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name for the peace of Jerusalem, the European Commonwealth. We thank you in the name of Jesus for the Middle East to include our own United States. We thank you, Lord God, for those leaders, those who are in leadership. Lord God, if they are not born again, we ask you today to send laborers to cross their path, to minister the word of God unto them that they won't be able to resist the drawing of the Holy Spirit and will make Jesus their, as their Lord and their Savior. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that this is a great nation. We are a wise and understanding people. Almighty God, we thank you not only for our nation, but we pray for the church the blood-bought church, the redeemed of the Lord. We thank you for leadership in our church. Every pastor, every teacher, evangelist, apostle, and prophet, all those whom you have set in the church, Father, to teach us your word so that we won't be tossed to and fro or carried about by every wind of doctrine. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. You have anointed them in the name of Jesus to build us up with the word of God moment by moment until we all come into the fullness and the measure and the stature of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, Lord God, we just don't pray for other pastors, but we pray for the man and woman of God in this house. We thank you in the name of Jesus for Pastor Wright and Pastor Leslie. We thank you that Pastor is filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. We thank you, Father, he is flowing in the knowledge of you, fulfilling your perfect will, Father, for his life and that of his family. We thank you in the name of Jesus that he follows your voice and not that of a stranger. We give you glory, honor, and praise that we as the body of Christ would not judge them, Father, or speak evil of them.
them. But we will pray for them and undergird them in the name of Jesus that they will carry out your perfect will for their lives. We thank you in the name of Jesus as we pray for them. Father God, they will give themselves continually to prayer and to the study of your word. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against them shall prosper, and every tongue that rises in judgment shall be shown to be in the wrong. They are enjoying days of heaven upon the earth. We give you glory and honor, Father, for giving us pastors after your own heart. We, as the body of Christ, cancel every attack of the wicked one to bring deceptions or distractions or temptations to them. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that the devil has no authority over him, them, for they are the redeemed of the Lord and have been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for each other, the body of Christ. We declare that we are blood bought and paid for. We thank you, Lord God, that because we we are the redeemed of the Lord, we say so. Therefore, we call those things that be not as though they were until they are. We thank you not only are we blessed, but our whole household is blessed down to a thousand generations. Father, we thank you because we are here at New Beginnings Christian Life Center Church. You have called each of us here. Thank you for the anointing that you have placed upon each of our lives. We declare that we are enforcing your original plan, not only for our lives, but for this ministry. We thank you that we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And because we are in the kingdom in the name of Jesus, we say that we can do what the word says that we can do. We have what the word says that we can have. We exercise our faith by believing that it is so, and we call it in by faith in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Therefore, we hold fast to our confession of faith. For our confession of faith, Father God, in the name of Jesus, declares what your word says. And we declare in Jesus' name that all of your promises are yes and amen. So therefore, in Jesus' name, we have great expectation this morning that your word that go forth will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish what we set it out to do. As the rain come down from heaven and the snow to water the earth, so shall your word be that go forth out of our mouth. We declare that angels are hearkening for the voice of your word. We give your word voice this morning in the name of Jesus. And we declare that you have heaven best just for us. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Father God, we declare we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and you, Father God, withhold no good thing from us. We are loved by you. We have been accepted by you. Father God, we don't care if we've been rejected by anybody else because we have been accepted by you, and nothing can separate us from your love. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus that we are sanctified, set apart for your glory. We are revitalized in the name of Jesus we are consecrated in the name of Jesus we are the healed of the Lord and not the sick we are the blessed of the Lord and not the cursed we father God are rich in everything in the name of Jesus Lord God you have already declared that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just we are the just and the just walks by faith and not by sight we are not moved by where we are or what we have because we we believe, Father God, in the name of Jesus. If we say it, we believe it, we receive it, and we expect it to show up in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you that we, in the name of Jesus, no sickness or disease shall attach itself to our bodies. We call ourselves healed. We call ourselves transformed, renewed powerhouses of God, going forth to make a mark that no man can erase. We declare that we Father, in the name of Jesus, are walking in faith and not by sight. We thank you, Lord God, that as we are in this earth, so are we in heaven. Father, we are the ones to bring heaven to the earth. And Lord, we thank you right now. In Jesus' name, your eyes are running to and fro in the earth, seeing who you can show yourself strong to. Father, we declare that you can show yourself strong unto us in Jesus' name. Name. If you believe that, come on and shout again. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. If you believe you are the head and not the tail, you are blessed going in and blessed coming out. Your whole household is blessed. God has already got angels are hearkening for the voice of your word. I want you to give God a great big shout. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name now that we have been redeemed from debt. We have been redeemed from poverty. We have been redeemed from lack. Father, every household here at New Beginners Christian Life Center is living under an open heaven. The blessing of the Lord is making each of us rich and add no sorrow to it. We thank you, Lord God. We are increasing more and more. Not only are we, but our whole house. We thank you, our ministry, Father God, is rich in every area. We declare that this building is debt-free in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord God, that it's supernaturally done. We give you praise and glory that as we sow, Father, you will give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto our bosom. We are sowing bountifully, and we are reaping a bountiful harvest in Jesus' name on every seed sown. Thank you for multiplying our seed in the name of Jesus. We declare that in this house, we have strong families, we have strong marriages, we have strong bodies, we have a strong mind. Our bodies are whole, fitly joined together. We thank you in the name of Jesus for it. We believe it and we receive it. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Oh, Lord God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that the supernatural word shall go forth today unhindered or influenced by any outside forces. We bind the devil up right now in the name of Jesus. We declare him a defeated foe by the blood of Jesus. He has no place in our services. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that every instrument will work in its perfection in this service today, that the praise team, Father God, God will sing like they never sang before. We thank you, Lord God, that burdens will be lifted and yokes will be destroyed in our lives. And we thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and shout hallelujah. Come on and agree with the word of God. Amen. Now, Father, we thank you that we are victorious. Well, we are more than conquerors. We always triumph in you. We are walking in victories and living the victorious life. We, Father, in the name of Jesus, are world overcomers. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We thank you because of the victorious life we walk in in favor this morning. The favor of God surrounds us like a shield. We have favor in the sight of all men. We thank you, Lord God, that you go before us making the crooked places straight. We thank you that, Father, in the name of Jesus, you are opening doors for us that men have said will never open. We thank you, Father, that we have the mind of Christ and we are thinking in alignment with him. We hold his thoughts, his feelings. Father, in the name of Jesus, his purposes are in our heart. Oh, Lord God, we thank you that we are spiritually minded and we are living the life of the Spirit. We thank you for Holy Ghost this morning. Holy Ghost, you may move as you will in our services because you dwell on the inside of us. Greater are you that is in us than he that is in the world. We declare, Father, that Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us into all truth. He is revealing things to us and showing us things to come. We thank you that our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard, neither have it entered in our heart the things that you have for those that love you and are called according to your purpose. We believe it, Father God, and we receive it right now. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, Father, we thank you that old things have passed away and all things have become brand new. We are new beginnings. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We have an expectation that only comes from you. We are seated with you in Christ in heavenly places. As he is in heaven, so are we in the earth. We thank you because we are the righteousness of God. You love us with an everlasting love and nothing can separate 
separate us from their love. So we thank you today, Father, as we have made our confession. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise for it. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Come on and give God praise, hallelujah. He is worthy. Come on, if you believe those promises, hallelujah. Come on and shout with the voice of triumph. God is good, hallelujah. We give him glory, honor, and praise, hallelujah, to your great name. Father, we thank you and give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah, glory to God, amen. Well, I tell you, God is good, amen. Is God good? Come on and praise his name forever and forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you, Father. We believe that we receive by faith and give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Somebody shout one more time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's receive our praise team. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, we bless you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to be in this place today. Come on and lift him up today. Come on and give him some praise today. Hallelujah. We glorify you, Lord, and thank you for life itself. How many of you are just thankful for being able to breathe this morning? Yes, Lord. It's a glorious day to worship and praise God with the very breath that he has given us. For it is his breath in our lungs. So we glorify him. Y'all are mighty quiet to be having the, the breath of God in your bodies. You're mighty quiet this morning. Hallelujah. Praise and worship time is your time. I know we're on the platform, but it's really your time. Your time to get in press and into the presence of God. Your time to say, thank you, Lord. Your time to say, Lord, you're worthy. Your time to say, Lord, you've been so good. So I'm going to block everything and everybody out. And in this little circle right here, it's going to be me and you, God. Come on, take your time. Draw your circle. Draw your circle of worship. Press into the presence of God. Come on now. Because he's been so good. Hallelujah. Psalms, stands, uh, book of 107 of Psalms and stanza 31 and 32 say, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works. To the children of men, that's you and I, he's been good. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people. Isn't that what we're doing right now? And praise him in the assembly of the elders. We've come to lift him up. We've come to give him glory. Why? Because we want him to be glorified in this place. We want his manifested presence. We want his glory to fill the room. Hallelujah. And blessed be the glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. That's Psalm 72 and 19. How many of you want to see the glory of God? You can see the glory of God. All of his goodness. All of his infinite perfections and greatness and worth. He'll come and dwell right among us. As you draw your circle of praise and worship. Glory to God. We're going to let the praises rise in this place today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the praises rise among us. Because we want to see the glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord, let it rise among us. 
Let the praises of our King rise among us. Come on and let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, somebody help me say, let it rise. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus today. Hey, let the glory of To rise, rise let the praise
glory. We give you honor. We lift you up. We want you to rise in the room. We want you to dwell with the sun. Yeah, yeah. Let it rise. your song unto the Lord. Lift your song, Lord. Be thy glorified. Let it rise. Let it rise. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Let it rise. Let it rise. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Let the praises rise. Let the glory rise in this place. Oh, we lift you, God. We want your glory to dwell among us today. For in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. You are welcome in this place, God. And from the fruit of our lips, we will bless you this day. We welcome you, God. We just want the praises to rise. None of us, God, but all of you. So that you and you alone. For you said no flesh shall glory in thy presence. Creator of all things. Ever loving, ever giving, God. We lift you and you alone up today. Feel 
we give you the glory right now. It all belongs to you. We lift our voices. There won't be a quiet tongue in this room because we all know how good you are, how good you've been, how good you will remain. For you are forever faithful. You are forever true. We glorify you, God, because you are forever strong and mighty. You are mighty in every battle. We lift you up. Let every tongue lift him. Let every tongue give him glory. Let every tongue give him glory. Right now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If all you can say is hallelujah. Oh, God, we lift you in this place. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Be glorified, Father. Hallelujah. For your love and your mercy and your grace, we say thank you. For your love and your grace and your mercy, we say thank you. For your love and your grace and your mercy, we say thank you. For your love and your grace. Come on now. Yes. Oh, for your love and your grace and your mercy, we say thank you. For your love and your grace. We say thank you for your love. And your grace. Yeah. And your yes. Yes. And your, yes. And your grace. Cause all I want is for you. Yes, God. For you to be All I want is for you. For your love and your grace and your mercy. Woo! For your love. Hallelujah. For your love, your grace, and your mercy. Hallelujah. Oh, I love the hook. The hook that says, fill me up. Ha, till I overflow. Hallelujah. It reminds me of Psalms 42 and 1 when David said, As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. Fill me up until I overflow. Hallelujah, glory to God. You may be seated in his presence. Ooh, we thank God for our anointed, appointed praise ministry team, amen. Hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. We're so excited to have you all here with us today, amen. We thank God for you and those that are worshiping with us this morning uh, with Facebook by Facebook Live, amen. Glory to God, we thank God for each of you, amen. Praise God, we have a couple of announcements uh, that are pertinent to uh, uh, us here at the New Beginning, amen. Somebody say, this Saturday. This Saturday. Say it again. This say it again. This now I want the men to say, this Saturday. Okay, I didn't hear you. Say it again. All right, this Saturday, that's right. The men are having their men breakfast. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The men breakfast is going to be this Saturday, uh, September the 24th at 10 o'clock a.m. Praise God. 
uh, your uh, theme is iron sharpens iron, amen. And they are having this bountiful breakfast. We're going to ask Mr. Stanley. Where is Mr. Stanley? Mr. Stanley in here this morning. There he is right there. That gentleman right there. Let's give Mr. Stanley a hand. Amen. Mr. Stanley is the resident cook around here. Amen. Praise God. I think Mr. Stanley, am I telling the truth? You cooked in the army, didn't you? If you can feed an army, I think you can do real good with this man breakfast. Amen. So if you guys would, uh, those of you, anyone who'd like to uh, volunteer to bring something, see Mr. Stanley at the end of service. There's a sign-up sheet on our information table. He'll be back there. He'll let you know what they need. So go back there and help the men have a great breakfast. Amen. Praise God that this Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. Also, ladies, where are the ladies? Amen. The ladies are in the house. Amen. Our women fellowship will be Saturday, October 22nd at 11 o'clock a.m. Our theme is the mind. Amen. We invite you to come out and be a part. Pastor Leslie uh, will be heading this up. Now, you know. When Pastor Leslie bring the ladies together, we have a great time. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Invite your friends. Amen. It's open just not to new beginning members. Amen. Bring your friends and your family uh, to come and join us um, in this fellowship that's going to be Saturday, October 22nd at 11 o'clock a.m. Praise God. Uh, also, membership classes. Amen. Those of you who have been waiting on the membership classes, they are here. Amen. Uh, we will be having them the first Sunday, beginning the first Sunday in October on October 2nd. At October 2nd, amen, uh, from 10 o'clock a.m. to 11.15 a.m. Classes 1 and 2 uh, will be taught, amen. So come out if you are interested in becoming a member or you've already signed up to be a member, amen. Come out for those classes, amen. They're going to help you learn about who we are, what we teach here, amen. And if you'd like to find out more of what's going on at New Beginnings, visit us on, on our Facebook page, New Beginnings, SCLC. That's our Facebook page, and you can go there and learn about events and all the speakers or anything that's going on here around the church. Just a couple, of, uh, another now. As you know, we are outreach-minded here, right? Okay, that was kind of weak. So let's say that again. Amen. Outreach. We don't have an outreach department. We are the outreach. Amen. Now, Pastor have put together this wonderful booklet here. If you don't have one, we ask you to pick one up as you leave. Inside of this booklet is all of, uh, listed all of our outreaches up until the end of the year. And our next outreach that is coming up is going to be September the 22nd. That's this Thursday. Say this Thursday. Many of you already know about this, but for our general congregation, uh, we feed um, about 31, sometimes 32, because they move out and move in, seniors at the Highland View apartment complex. We uh, go out there and take them groceries because the money, they're on a, I don't like to say fixed income, but uh, they get whatever they get monthly and it runs out toward the end. So we choose to go at the end of the month to help augment their groceries and what they need. And uh, this has been a blessing. We've been doing it. And I tell you, God has shown up and showed out every time. In the booklet, you're going to find out all the things that we need uh, for them. Like, for instance, uh, the need list will be like crackers, unsalted. Now you say, well, we can just bring in and no, their, their, their diet changes. Everybody know your diet changes and, and some of them have, have challenges in their body. So they want unsalted crackers, cooking oil, cereal. One lady came to me and said, I didn't get to give my cereal last month. And so I said, oh, you didn't call me. I said, well, anyway, I'm going to tell you what I said, but anyway, uh, cereal. And they like a special kind because it's heart healthy, not full of sugar like Honey Nut, Cheerios, oatmeal, individually wrapped package, canned meat, tuna, salmon, Vienna sausages. Some of y'all know what those Vienna sausages are. Noodles, 
And then we give toiletries like toilet paper, tissue, and things like that. So pick up one of these books and you can plan what you want to give for the next month. Also coming up in October, we'll be doing our homeless ministry. We do this once a year where we go to the park, Poindexter Park has been renamed now. Downtown, we take um, uh, clothing. So the winter, we are taking um, survival packs. Survival pack. Let me get over to the October one. God, hallelujah. Here we go. In that book, you'll see coats, sweaters, scarves, socks. And let me just say this. The men love underwear. I don't know why, but they do. Y'all got any more underwear? Amen. So, hey, you pick up a package or something. We're going to be doing that on October the 8th, Saturday, October the 8th. Survivor packs will include like toothpaste, uh, you know, shaving cream, razors, things like that. So pick something up, bring it, and we'll put it together. We'll go in there and not, we have some of the greatest cooks. We took pots of soup the last time. Amen. We're going to do it again. How many cooks can put together a pot of soup? All right, I heard that. Praise God. Now, Pastor Leslie, let me tell you about her. She bring her outreach cake, and the cake run out before the soup. That you're not supposed to have your dessert before you have your soup, but they do. She brings that outreach cake, and she told me, Look, I'm bringing my outreach cake, amen. So, uh, pick up this booklet, and it's gonna let you know everything that we need, uh, to on that Saturday, October the 8th. You can begin bringing your coats, your sweaters, your scarves, shoes, everything is in this book. Start next, um this coming Sunday, this coming Sunday, so we can go through and pack up everything and have it ready to go out in October. Amen. Praise God. So those are our announcements for today. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for each of you participating. I look forward to it. I'm expecting to receive lots of stuff for them. Amen. Praise God, uh, because we are outreach-minded and we want to make sure we are doing what God wants us to do. Amen? Praise God. We're so excited. You all are the best. You always do the best. We are so Give yourselves a hand. Amen. Praise God. So uh, let's see, what else do we have? I've talked about that last, but certainly not least. I want you to know, somebody said every Sunday. I start to say er, but we got English teachers and everybody in here. So every Sunday, as a reminder, we have a service at 11 o'clock. Amen. Praise God. Come. We have in-person service. I, I don't like to say in-person service, but service every Sunday at 11 o'clock. Uh, bring your family, come out and join us. Every Sunday is a blessing, amen, to be here since the pandemic, amen. Praise God. I know some of y'all don't want to get up, but hey, come on. You'll be blessed when you get here, amen. Praise God. So that concludes our announcements, amen. Uh, yes, that's right, concludes our announcements. We've been welcome to visitors. Pastor said, welcome to visitors. <laughs> If you are visiting with us for the first time, please stand and we want to uh, welcome all of those that are visiting through Facebook Live as well. But you are in person here. If you are visiting, please stand. We'd like to welcome you. All right. Praise God. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. We uh, have something you are being handed there. Uh, that's a, a welcome packet from uh, here at New Beginners. We'd like to welcome you on behalf of our pastors, Pastor Kevin and Leslie and the entire New Beginners family. We don't believe that you are here by accident, that it's in the will of God for you to be here. If you are expecting to receive something, God is going to anoint your ears to hear it today, and you're going to be blessed. So we want to welcome you again, invite you to come back anytime. Amen. Uh, New Beginners, let's give them another hand clap and welcome you. We don't want to forget our, those that are worshiping with us by Facebook Live. If you are a uh, first time guest on our first book, uh, Facebook Live, you are welcome as well. Amen. Praise God. That concludes our announcements and our welcome of our first time guest. We got uh, Pastor Leslie coming. Let's give her a hand. Praise the Lord. How y'all doing this fine morning? I don't know if y'all doing good or not. How y'all 
y'all doing this fine morning? Glory to God. Well, just wanted to give y'all a praise report and give you a report of what we've been doing. Of course, we know that New Beginnings, we don't have an outreach department. We live lives of reaching out. And so once this, uh, we started to uh, uh, do uh, for uh, help people with the water crisis, we've been seeing miracle after miracle. Do y'all want to hear the miracles that's been happening? Oh, my God. And so... Uh, when we announced that we was going to start uh, being a distribution of water for uh, the Jackson, uh, Jackson and Metro area, we got uh, shipped to us from Word of Faith International Christian Center with Bishop Keith Butler, 20 pallets of water. Now with those 20 pallets of water, we, gave, we had on a Friday and Saturday, the community to come out and we uh, gave each uh, each uh, family two uh, two uh, uh, cases of water of which we gave up uh, gave up almost 900 pal uh, cases of water also uh, uh, Terry High School the uh, band director called and said, do y'all have any water that we can have? So they came over and they got a half a pallet of water for the band at Terry High School. We also gave out waters for our members here at New Beginnings. And also, while we was giving out waters that weekend, we, uh, Bishop got a call from one of his dear friends, Bishop George Davis, and they wired over $3,000 for more water. There in Jacksonville, Florida, Impact Church in Jacksonville, Florida. We took that $3,000 and purchased 10 more pallets of water. And the 10 more pallets of water we just delivered to four JPS schools and one charter school this past Friday. So those schools were Smilo Prep, Marshall Elementary, Wilkins Elementary, Sykes Elementary, and Oak Forest Elementary. Amen? We gave them two pallets of water apiece. Now, how many of y'all know them pallets is heavy? That's a lot of work. And of course, we had the guys to come out and unload those 20 pallets, and they was working, man, getting those pallets out and getting them into the gym and doing all that. So we bought 10 more pallets from Walmart and to deliver those, we was going to have to believe God because, Bishop, was you going to lift the pallet? He ain't lifting nothing. <laughs> and we wanted to get it to, you know that Lord, the Lord will provide. How many of y'all know the Lord will provide? When you set yourself out there to be a blessing, God will come in and undergird you and give you supernatural strength. Two men in a truck, two men in a truck, have partnered with us to deliver these uh, pallets of water to these schools and guess what they charged us? Zero! <laughs> Donated it! <laughs> oh my God! And, and so we want to thank uh, two men in the truck for that also. Now, so this week, we, 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 uh, a, bishop, a bishop heard from his other dear friend, Bishop uh, Joel, I mean, Pastor Joel Gray, Gregory from the Linked Up Church in Powder Street, Springs, Georgia. They wanted to be a part of helping and blessing people. And so he took up an offering last Sunday so that they can send their best down here to us. And so we went to the bank, and we went to the, to the uh, they overnighted the check. He said, hey, I'm going to overnight that check to you. And so we went to the post office. The check was in there, and guess how much it was? Y'all don't want to know how much. Y'all sure y'all want to know how much it? You know, Lord said he'll give seed to the sower. Guess how much it was? Linked up church. Pile of Springs, Georgia. Pastor Joel Gregory. And it lovely congregation. Y'all looking mad now. <laughs> It was over $15,800. Oh my God. <laughs> Supernatural. So now we have, we're able to purchase more money. I mean, purchase more.
our waters, and we want to do sanita sanitizer, hand sanitizer, the disinfectant stuff. There's so much more that we want to do. So we're able to do that with that wonderful donation from Linked Up Church from uh, uh, in Powder Springs, Georgia. And then, I don't know if y'all walk in the supernatural like we do, do y'all? We get a call from our financial comp uh, company, the ones that financed us. Who does this? He said, Pastor Wright, I got it. We didn't even apply for it. I got a grant for you for $5,000 to do whatever y'all need to do in your local area. Come on now, $5,000. And this, all this happened within a span of two weeks. And so we're just excited about what God is doing. We also have some other uh, things. People, uh, other churches are saying they want to donate. They're going to give. They're going to send money. Uh, 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 we had, these are churches from out of state. These are out of state churches who are coming in to help and, and to uh, give money to help the, the, our wonderful people in Jackson and metro area. And there's so much more that we want to do. Of course, we know that uh, uh, they say you can drink the water now. Somebody said, don't do it. <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to keep giving out water. We're going to keep distributing water. What do y'all think? Yes, so we have some water here today. We have water here today that's in the gym. We'll have those guys to bring them out at the end. If you need water, then we'll have the young fellas that are here to take those waters to your car. So we're still giving out water. And then also uh, this weekend, we're going to be uh, uh, purchasing some more water and we'll be giving that out. Now, if you know of any vendors, any people, any, any, somebody that wants to donate, wants to give, we're open for that. If you know vendors who wants to donate uh, hand sanitizer, or uh, uh, disinfecting stuff, just stuff to give. Y'all, come on, y'all. Y'all, we are a distribution center. We're here to help people. So y'all, just, just get that information to us, and we'll be just blessed to receive it and to bless people with it. How many of y'all going to help with this? Yeah. Amen, amen. I'm not. What, uh, did I leave out something? Oh, he said we got another pastor from out of state that said that he's, he's going to send an 18-wheeler truck with water in it. Y'all ain't, y'all, what is, what? Well, y'all must want to drink the water. How many of y'all want to drink that water? We got <laughs> another pastor who is going to be sending, and so he's just right now looking for his driver and, and uh, arranging for that to come. And so when you become a, 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 a river, you become a, a, a channel, then, then you're constantly flowing with the blessings. You're constantly flowing, giving out, and helping people. I hope y'all didn't think we were just going to be a once and that's all. We're constantly giving and helping people. So be a part. Another thing I want to just admonish you, if you are, uh, I know all y'all going to help with these outreaches that we have in our mobile missions uh, thing because we all live lives of reaching out. So when you buy something, buy it in bulk. If you see that we're about to go do our homeless project, get a, uh, get a, a case of toothpaste. Get a case of this, a case of that that will help these wonderful people in the name of Jesus. Hey, they say you're only one paycheck away from you being there yourself. So make sure that you help somebody else. We also got two, two more pastors who are in the process of sending money out of state. Okay? And, and so it's constantly coming in because we're going to continue to give people water, sanitation things. And all of this is leading up to one day soon, I mean soon, New Beginnings will become a distribution center for food, all kinds of stuff, clothes, food, all of that. So that and this is your church. These, these are the things that we do. And, and honey, you did an incredible job with that girl. And uh, oh, oh my goodness, we got so much. And, and in fact, bring it on in, fellas. 
bring it on in. Got Brother Luther and my son-in-law go just showing you what's going on. And also, we're going to be sending pictures to the pastors. And we got people who are donating money out of state. We're going to be sending them pictures of all the things that we're doing. And, and that's another reason why people are giving. They get to see pictures that they're, where, where their money is going. That's so very important. So I just, I just had the fellas, just bring me a pallet of water. Put it, put it right there so you guys can see what's going on. We're not joking with y'all. Y'all think we've been playing, haven't you? We're not joking. Just leave it right there. Good to see you. I, I tell you, man, we're not playing. This ain't no one deal we drop water and then split. Folk need help, guys. People need help. Some of y'all still need water. You got to be careful with this water thing. You don't want to play with it. You know, we're from Michigan. We came here in 95. We've been here now 27 years. Look at here. When that water crisis hit Flint, we were there. And ain't nothing to play with. People died. People got sick. I mean, all kinds of stuff happened. We don't want the water crisis here to get to that level. I'm going to leave that alone. Ain't that, don't get quiet. It is what it is. Okay? So we got to continue to help people with water. We even told the schools. In fact, we didn't pick, you know, we, uh, oh, my goodness. Last week we had a principal here, right? What school was that? Gary Rose right here in Byron. Is that right? And, and now we're sponsoring that school. While we were out there, we didn't mess around and picked up a couple of more schools that we're going to be sponsoring. These schools need help bad, real bad. And we were asking them, do you, do you have a sponsor? Nope. You know, we used to have 600 kids. Now we're down to 250, something like that. What that they, their, their attendance didn't drop. There's a lot of things going on. And we need to keep our eyes open and our ears open to what's going on. And that's what your church is doing. This is what New Beginnings, we're keeping our eyes open and our ears open. We're going to go find a need and fill a need. We're going to go and find a need and we're going to go and and we're going to go and that's the name of the game. That's what we do. We're more than a church. We are a community. Our job is to help people, the lost and dying world. Give them the gospel and while we're doing it, feed them. Clothe them. I've already told Sandra, she, she, she's over the outreach. Let's do some outreach. That's why she, go, she showed you that booklet. If you look at the booklet, we gave it out to all of our members. At least I thought we did. The booklet is at the front desk. Go up there and get what you need to get. It'll tell you, we don't just do it one time a year. We're doing this all year long. That's where your monies go. That's why you tithe. That's why you give your offerings, so that we can do all these things. The finance company that financed this building, $1.6 million, they're giving us grants. They're getting in on what we're doing. That's why you give. When you give, your church will grow. Let's pay this building off, then we can do even more things for Jackson Metro. We're, we're just getting started, guys. That's what church is all about, all right? I didn't say enough. Praise the Lord. So just again, uh, we have an outreach coming up this sat, uh, Thursday. If you're, if you're uh, uh, available uh, at 10 o'clock, we'll be at the Highland View uh, Apartments. Uh, giving out groceries to those wonderful people there. And then also on October 8th, we're going to be doing the homeless uh, at, uh, is it uh, Point Dexter? At Point, uh, Point Dexter Park, we'll be giving out survival kits and everything. In, uh, is it, are we giving out clothes and stuff too? Clothes, remember now, they like underwear. I remember Angela uh, Walker, she brought some, several packs of, uh, 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 of new underwears. Them things flew off the shelf so fast. Y'all all right, because y'all got all right underwear. I'm just saying. <laughs> so we want to make sure that you be a part of that. Come out and be a blessing. It'll make your life so much better.
Oh, and also, okay. Also, how many of y'all been watching us on Facebook and uh, uh, looking at the pictures? Oh, Lord, what in the world? <laughs> y'all ain't been looking at us on Facebook. Praise the Lord. Exceeding abundantly, above all that we have asked or can think. That's what we see happening in our church right now. And that is because we have pastors who, huh, they do the word. If nothing, we know that our pastors preach the word, they live the word, they do the word, and as a result, we have supernatural, supernaturally doing things. So yes, we ought to be excited about that. Amen. Amen. And just like them. Yes, 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 yes. Every answer, everything we need is in the word of God. Whatever the issue is, turn to a neighbor and say, it's in the word. I don't care if you're three or 153, tell your neighbor it's in the word. If it's your finances, if it's your children, if it's your, your mind and your emotions, the answer is where? It's in the word. Keep the word before your eyes. Keep the word coming out of your mouth. Keep the word going in your ears. I'll say it again. Keep the word before your eyes. Keep the word coming out of your mouth. Keep the word in your ears, because it's the answer to everything. Give me the word. Make it plain and clear to me. Give me the word. It's the light that I might see. Give me the word. It's my total victory over every situation. You need the word. Oh, give me the word. Oh, make it plain and clear to me. Give me the word. It's a light that I might see. Give me the word. It's my total victory, and over every situation, give me the word. It's been tested, it has been tried, searching minds have satisfied. Though the story is old, his message still is clear. It's been ridiculed, it's been shamed, but its power has never changed. It will stand the test forever. Give me the word, oh, give me the word. Oh, make it plain and clear to me. Give me the word. It's the light that I might see. Give me the word. It's my total victory. And over every situation, give me the word. I 
don't want it watered down, sugar-coated or profound. Just give me basic truths that up stand the course of time. Preach it strong, preach it clear, so that all the world may hear. It will change your life forever. Give me the word, oh, give me the word, oh, make it plain and clear to me, give me the word, oh, it's a light that I might see, give me the word, it's my total victory, and over every situation, Give me the word, so give me the word, make it plain and clear to me, give me the word, it's the light that I might see, give me the word, it's my total victory. And when I am tested, death may be drawing near. When I am challenged and I stand in need over every situation, give me the word. I'll say that again. Oh, when I am troubled. And when I am tested, death may be drawing near. When I am challenged and I stand in need over every situation, give me the word, give me the word, give me the word. Make it plain and clear to me, give me the word. It's a light that I might see. Give me the word. It's my total victory over every situation. Give me the word. Help me say standing. Standing. Over every situation Yes, I'm standing Oh yes, I'm firmly planted I'm standing Of Christ my Savior Situation. I am standing, yeah. Anybody standing on the word of God? Anybody firmly planted in the word? The promises of Christ, my Savior. Yes, I'm standing. Over everything that I may face, over every situation, over every situation, give me the word.
Father, we just thank you today. Lord, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that as we delve into your word, your word will come alive to us. And Lord, I thank you for the great teacher among us, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us into all truth. And Lord, we just thank you that my tongue is like that of a ready writer, ready to write upon the heart to your people, your uncompromised, holy, and infallible word. And Father, we just thank you today for a fresh move of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we thank you that we're not just a word church, but we are a Holy Ghost church. And Father, we just thank you today, Lord. Lord, we covenant with you in advance to give you all of the glory, honor, and praise for what shall be revealed through your holy written word. We thank you today. In Jesus' name, all that agree with this prayer, shout it. Shouted, Amen. We'll greet somebody and you may be seated. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you all are ready for the word of God? Amen. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm ready for the word of God. I won't be long before you today. I love the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Well, turn with me to James chapter 4. Amen. Praise God. James chapter 4. Amen. Praise the Lord. And by the way, uh, I'm about to make a statement that don't mean that I'm biased. I'm not biased about that because I got other teams I love as well. But what about them Jackson State Tigers? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I tell you that. Now, I do like all the other schools, all corn and all of the other ones, Mississippi State and all that. But I tell you what, you got something to reckon with, with JSU. They, they got a will of a team. I mean it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I figured out how to find that game, too. You got to search around. Amen. We ain't talking about that today, but amen. Praise God. I found the game and uh, impressive. Amen. All right, James chapter 4. But, you know, I do remember the day. <laughs> I, I can remember being in Michigan, in Detroit, where we used to watch Grambling and JSU play. Grambling wasn't nothing to mess with. That was back in the day. Woo, they were whooping everybody. Now here we are, what is it, 2022? Now Jackson whooping Grambling. I, I mean, back then, I think it was Coach Eddie Robinson. Could nobody beat that man? Good Lord. In fact, I believe he's in the Hall of Fame now. Amen. Praise God. But back in that day, oh, man, could nobody touch Gremlin. Boy, they were something to reckon with. But now, let me tell you, that JSU something to reckon with. Uh, amen. And you got the other schools, they something to reckon with too. Amen. All right. James chapter 4. Now, I don't want nobody to leave my church, go join another church because I'm mentioning something like this. Now, you know, folk could do that kind of stuff. <laughs> amen. Amen. James chapter, I'm not biased or nothing on team because I got other teams I love. Amen, praise God, hallelujah. We, and we won't touch that. James chapter 4, verse 7. Even though we do need to pray for them cowboys, don't we? Boy, I'm, I'm trying to get started. I'm, I'm trying to get started here. We need to pray for them boys. I, I, Lord Jesus. All right, have y'all found James chapter 4 yet? Amen, amen, praise God, hallelujah. All right, let's take a look at verse 7. Again, we are going to finish up today. We're talking about give Satan no place. Give Satan no place. Shut the door to the devil. Close up all the windows. Somebody say windows. <laughs> yeah, you got to shut them windows. You got to close the door, shut them windows, and seal up them cracks, amen. And so we've been talking about that for the what the past four weeks I believe and so today we're going to attempt to uh, bring it to closure now how many of you know that God's word is pregnant 
It always gives birth to new facets of revelation knowledge. So you can never truly exhaust any given subject, but you got to simply just unhook. So today we're going to attempt to unhook, amen, on this subject so we can get into other matters. James chapter 4 <clears throat> and verse 7, notice he says, Submit yourself therefore unto God. Now this series is so very important. I encourage you to go back, listen to all the things that's been said, because it's going to show you and teach you how to live a victorious life as a believer, as a Christian. How many of you want to live a victorious Christian life? Let me see by a, a show of hand. How many of you want to live in victory? Amen. How many of y'all tired of the devil uh, sneaking up on you and you know, leaving doors open, windows open, little cracks open? As what we've been talking about, you know, if you let the devil ride, he'll try to drive. You put him in the trunk. Next thing you know, he didn't push his way through the trunk. Now he's sitting in the back seat. Then you give him another week or two, then he'll be on the passenger side up front. Then you give him another week or two, he might just be trying to drive the car all together. And, and so that's what we've been talking about, how we can eliminate this, how we can stop that. So note there in James chapter 4, verse 7, he said, first of all, first things first, somebody say first things first. first, things first. Submit yourself to God. And you know, we had a lot to say about that. That means to come under his mission, to come under his wisdom and understanding. And then you'll be able to do what? Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we had a lot of things to say about that. But first of all, we must submit our lives to God. We must come under his mission, come under his vision. And the whole purpose of this message is so that all of us, we're in this fight together. We're in this war together, guys, okay? And, and so we're not, you know, trying to be negative or anything like that. We're simply trying to give you, amen, uh, uh, the proper armor to work with so that you can give Satan no place in your life. How many of you tired of giving Satan a little place in your life? Yeah, you know, you thought he would behave. The devil don't behave. He's something else. But first of all, note that you got to submit your life to God, and then you'll be able to, as what some people say, bind the devil. Have you guys ever heard that phrase before? I bind the devil. I command the devil to stop. Well, you can't do any binding or commanding until you first of all do what? Submit yourself to God. We're binding, but we're not submitted. It, it doesn't work like that, okay? All right, then Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4, let's go there, another one of our text scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 27, it says, neither give place to the devil. Neither give place, the Greek word there is topos, which comes from the English word of which we all know, topography. And when you talk about topography, you're talking about landmass, like an inch or a yard or a foot. I mean, you know, if you give the devil an inch, He'll try to take a, not just a mile, but a country mile. I found that out when I moved from Detroit to come here. One mile in Michigan is one thing, but a mile in Mississippi is a whole nother ball game. But if you give the devil an inch, you see, give Satan no place. Don't give him no topos, no topography, okay? If you give him an inch, he'll try to take a mile on you. You know, you're trying to be nice to the devil. Watch this. Don't try to cut a deal with the devil. Find, find a neighbor right now and tell him, quit trying to cut deals with the devil. Yeah, if you give him an inch, he's going to try to take a mile on you. You know, you know, you try to do a little something, something, and then next thing you know, you all the way over. Huh? Yeah, you know. And so you got to be so careful. And, and, and like one older preacher told me one time, years ago when I was in my early 20s as a young rookie preacher, he said, son, let me explain something to you. You get a devil an inch, he'll take a mile. He said, and then you'll wind up paying more than you were willing to pay, staying longer than you were willing to stay, going further than you wanted to go. I mean, y'all didn't figure that out. You did Oh, man, you, you know, you're just trying to be nice about the thing. I'm going to just do a little something, something. And you go from doing a little something, something to something big, something. 
Remember we talked about those donuts? I believe it, what was that, Krispy Kreme? Uh, you know, when we moved down here, they had that store, Krispy Kreme. And when that light turned on, what does that mean, guys? When that light, don't, look, look at here, look at here, y'all. Shoot, you can't eat just one of them. The first one dissolves. It disappears. Uh, how many of y'all remember the old statement, you can't just have one Lay's potato chip. Next thing you know, you start out, oh, I'm disciplined. I'm disciplined. You get one chip. Ooh, let me take another one. Let me get that second one. Next thing I done bust the whole bag out, you know. We'll see the same thing. And I try to use these funny natural examples. You know, it's kind of like when mama gave you castor oil. My mama, my mama put a little Kool-Aid with it. Kind of help it out a little bit, you know what I mean? It was going down. It's trying to go in reverse on me. Get up, get up. Mama, get that tablespoon. Not a teaspoon. A tablespoon. <laughs> and I kept going in reverse. Mama said, well, I'll fix you. She put a little Kool-Aid with it. Hold your nose. Well, that's all we're doing. I'm putting a little Kool-Aid with it to help you out. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because we do got to take our medicine. Amen. So neither give place, topos, topography, to the devil. You give him an inch, he'll try to take a mile. Now, Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13, and that you will learn for, for some of you young believers, young Christians. <laughs> Trust me, you'll learn. You can't cut deals with the devil. It, it don't work. How you know? Because we didn't all try it. We didn't already try it. Well, y'all didn't do it right. Oh, oh, yeah, we did. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> and we got messed up every time. And some of us, watch this, some of us today is still recovering from it. I said some of us. Because everybody, as Minister Logan uh, mentioned a minute ago, or, or, you know, look, look, everybody got something to deal with. In some area, I don't know, there's a million different areas, right? And one thing you learn with time, you give him an inch, he's going to try to take a mile, right? And so we've, we've talked about that, Romans chapter 13, verse 14, another one of our text scriptures, but put you on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions and make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now, when you mention the word lust, people's minds go straight to sexual. Now, you can include that, but lust means an inordinate desire or craving for something. That's all. An inordinate desire or craving for something. Young people, I need you to listen very carefully, especially those who are in college. You know, there's going to be all sorts of temptations out there, tests and trials. And you'll learn with time. You got to learn to submit your life to the Lord first. And then you'll be able to resist. Remember how we talked about how you can see things happening at a far, way ahead of you. Way ahead of you. And, and, and God is instructing you. He's trying to teach you this is what's coming down the pipe. This is what's coming down the line. But somehow, as young people, we just don't listen. And so let's say it's a mile away. And then the more uh, you succumb to the flesh or fleshly desires or cravings that don't line up with the word of God, the closer it comes to you. And, and, and so it was a mile away. And next thing you know, a month go by and then it's now just right up the street. <laughs> then another week go by and now it's at the front gate, whatever that situation might be. And then you give it another week it's knocking at the door. And that's when we get ourselves in trouble. It is hard to resist Satan when he's already at the front door. He don't start out at the front door. He starts out a mile or two, 20 miles down the road. And that is when you resist. Are y'all following? Amen. Give Satan no place. That's when you resist, when you see it a mile away. That's when you build up your resistance. You don't wait till it's at the door. That's where we, I'm using we now, all of us, and not just you, all of us. That's how we get in trouble. We wait until they get to the 
front door and now we're trying to resist. It's almost like trying to build a house in the midst of a tornado. Have you ever been in a tornado? I have. It's nothing to play with. I mean, it, it, woo, you just ain't got the words for it. Right in the middle of it. And it took the angels of the Lord for it to pass over us. We were at one of them parks. Uh, uh, we were at a family reunion picnic or something. They had them big old 100-year-old trees, big tall. I mean, just big old trees. And they separated as if, you see this flower right here? As if a man took his hands and spread them out. I said, oh, my God. It's here. The siren was going off. And we wound up in the ditch to get to the lowest spot because we was out at the park. I think it was called Battle Creek Park. I think it was called Battle Creek Park. And man, it looked like a man came in there and just spread them big, huge trees. Just, I said, oh my God, Dad said, put your head between your legs. We were in the car. It just hit, just like, boom, it hit quick. Nothing to play with. It's very difficult to build a house. It's very difficult to resist when you allow it to become a tornado. It's just a thought. Amen. So we're talking about give the enemy no place. Don't open the door for the enemy to come in. If you let the devil ride, he'll surely try to drive. Don't give Satan an opening in your life. Again, we need to shut every door, close every window, and seal up every crack. We can prevent the devil from getting the best of us. Amen. Uh, we don't have to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Uh, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We know we don't have to be ignorant of Satan's devices. And verse 11, I'm sorry, I don't have time to wait for you today. We got to just, just jot that scripture down, amen? Or, or just put it inside your little cell phone, you know, Amen. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. I mean, you know, you cannot allow the enemy to get the advantage. You, you can't allow, and then I had a little uh, example about that, but we ain't got time to talk about all that. But you can't allow Satan to get the advantage on you because when another team, let's take sports, they get an advantage on you, that means that they got more opportunity to win and to be victorious. Why? They have an advantage. Okay, so we cannot allow Satan to get the advantage. That's why we got to shut them doors and close those windows. Because when you leave the door open, he gets an advantage. When you leave the window open, huh, and you don't seal up them cracks, he'll get that little advantage on you to be victorious over you. So Paul told the church, don't see, he's talking to church people, not sinners, lest Satan should get the advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We don't have to be ignorant of his devices. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and then we're going to jump into what we're going to talk about today. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Have you ever been in a situation where you said, ooh we, I can't believe this sin just overtook me. Oh my goodness. Ooh, I just ain't got the power to resist. Ooh, that's just too much for me. Where did this come from? I just can't help myself. Well, let's see what the scripture has to say about that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, Paul writing again to church, talking to church folk, Christians. He said, there has no temptation. And if you look at that from another translation, it says no temptation, test, or trial. Whatever situation you're going through, there is no situation taking you, but such as what? Common to man. What are you trying to say, Pastor? Ain't nothing new. Excuse my English. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Ain't nothing new. You've seen it somewhere, or you've seen it somewhere in somebody else's life. You've seen it on television. You've heard of this. You've seen this somewhere. But note there, but God is faithful. Say, God is faithful. God is faithful. Yeah, God is faithful who will not listen suffer you to be tempted, tested, or tried. Watch this. He won't let you go through something. Listen. Above that you are able, 
but will with the temptation, test or trial, make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. So whatever you're going through, you got to get this revelation, God, because you can't build this thing up so big that you feel like I'll never conquer it. I can never jump over this hurdle. I can never climb this wall. And that's where we get in trouble. I, look, I just can't help myself. It's just me. You got to accept me the way I am. How many times have we said that? This is just me. It is what it is. Hey, 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 ain't no change in me. Hey, this is just the way I am. I can't have just one Krispy Kreme. I got to have a dozen. Look, that's just in my DNA. <laughs> have you guys ever thought that before? Perhaps all of us have. This is just me. I done tried. Look at him. I done tried. And it's just me. And you can use that in whatever area that it might be. I just can't stop. All right. Well, what does scripture just say? Paul said, there is no temptation that's taking you, but such is common to man. In other words, there's nothing new under the sun. Notice what the Amplified Bible said. And I thought I would bring this out because it's going to help you. Okay. He said, notice the Amplified says here, there is no temptation beyond human resistance. There is no temptation. Are y'all listening? It's okay. It's okay. Y'all look up here. I know it's kind of a little tough. I, 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 I can sense that. We're faster going with this. Just hang in there. It's all good. Okay? All right? The Amplified said, there is no temptation beyond human resistance. You got to get a revelation on that. Hello? You got to get a revelation that whatever I'm going through... I can beat this. I can overcome this. Why? Because Jesus overcame it over 2,000 years ago. And so, you know how the Bible says in Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord and in power of his might. The reason why you keep stumbling and falling is because you're trying to be strong in your own might. Look here. In your own might, you'll never beat Krispy Kreme. In your own might, you can't shake Lucy. You can't shake Bill. Okay, oh Jesus. Shaking up. Ain't no shaking at all. It's got you. That's why you got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You trying to win in your might. It it don't work like that. It's greater is he, First John said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the greater one is Jesus. Since that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me, he'll quicken my mortal body. You need a quickening. You got to be strong in the Lord. You can't fight it in the flesh. You're going to lose. Now, I love to say this. I was sharing with my wife one time. I said, look here. The temptations, tests, and trials will wear out your good intentions. Wow. And let me go over here and talk to you folks. Yeah, that's right. Temptation, tests, and trials will wear you out naturally. Hey, it'll wear you out naturally. You got to be strong in the power of his might. It's not that you so good. Oh, I resisted that. Okay, that's good. All right. Now, you better get yourself in the Word of God. You better become a doer of the Word. No, no. I got this. All right, Mr. Fancy. You're going to give in somewhere. Why? Because there is a temptation, test, and trial that's got your number. Oh, it's got your number. You just ain't met it yet. That's why you got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You can't handle it. You can't handle it in yourself. You have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's the key. We look a whole lot greater in Christ than we do out of Christ. Are y'all listening? We're talking about give Satan no place. Give him no place. All right. The Amplified goes on to say again, we just read it. Let's read it again, but add a little bit more to it. It goes on further to say, again, no temptation. There is no temptation beyond, beyond human resistance. 
he will not allow you, he will not allow you to be tempted beyond your ability to resist. Why? Because he's faithful. Oh, y'all. Oh, you're great. You, you have the great helper within you. Quit trying to deal with life by yourself. We're not built to be just by ourselves. We're built for community. We're built for community, which means other people. We got to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's why you got to find yourself a few crazy friends that can pray with you in order to resist. You'll fail every time when you get outside of Christ. All right? Okay. Let's move on. Now let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Here's another way of how to resist Satan and give Satan no place. Guard your heart. This, this is what a lot of folks, Christians, not folk, Christians, this is what a lot of Christians have problems with. They don't guard their heart. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. And let's start there at verse 20. You got to guard your heart. I said you got to guard your heart. Because out of your heart flow all the issues of life. Life comes from your heart. Are y'all with me? Yes. Everything about you comes from your heart. That's why you got to put a guard there. You got to put a guard there. I said, you got to put a guard there. Have hey, you guys ever seen a guard? Uh, you know, some of us been kind of watching Queen Elizabeth, and they're showing you the different guards. Or if you ever went to Washington, D.C., and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, I've been there. We've taken a group of, how many kids was it, Sandra? I don't know, about 75 or 100 kids. We took them to Washington with our mentorship program. Those are some of the things that we do here so that they get a chance to see the Capitol and all that, you know. And, and they had that guard there. That guard was there. Had that hat tilted. Oh, he was smooth. It wasn't just up. He had that thing tilted. And just standing there. And then with March, everything was in unison. And then when he was there for about an hour, then it was the changing of the guard. Till every every movement was precision. Boy, one of our kids made a mistake and said a word. Something happened. Ah! You know, just a noise. Please remain quiet. That down. I know my wife is around here somewhere. Honey, you remember that? I said, whoa, you talking about dead silent, just like it is now, just dead silent. So somebody made a remark or something, uh, somebody was fiddling with somebody and, and, and remains quiet, silent. You got silent too. Well, guard your heart. When Satan comes with disturbances, please remain silent. <laughs> disturbances come. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words, incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. What? God's word. Keep them where? In the midst of your heart. Right in the middle of your heart. Verse 22. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. That's a whole nother teaching there. Keep thy heart. This is what I want to zero in on. Verse 23. Keep your heart with what? All diligence for out of it, out of what? Your heart are what? The issues of life. 
And then it goes on to kind of share with you, how do you do it? Well, put away from you a froward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from you. Let your eyes look right on. On what? The word of God. And let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Let's see what the Message Bible has to say about this scripture. Right there where it says, keep your heart. Verse 23, the Message Bible put it this way. Keep a vigilant watch over your heart. That's where life starts. Wow. That's where your life starts. Another translation put it this way. Guard your heart more than anything else. Guard your heart more than anything else. Why? Because see, out of your heart, it de- your heart determines the type of life you're going to live. That's why you got to guard that heart. You can't just allow anything in. It's going to determine your life. That's why as Christians, be honest with you, as Christians, you got to be disciplined. That's in any occupation, as a doctor, as a lawyer, or school teacher, this discipline is required. Discipline is required. I was reading a quote one day where it said, out of all the disciplines and different occupations and religions, Christianity is on the least. You'll see less, watch this, you will see less discipline in Christians than any other religion. You take a look at some of them other religions out there. I mean, just take a look at it and get out of there. <laughs> Let me tell you, a, 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 and I'm not even going to name a few of them. We had a class in Bible school that dealt with religions. We had to study the different religions so that we'll be able to respond to them. Oh, you talking about discipline. Some of them religions are real, real discipline until you get to Christianity. People trying to do life without Christ. You know, I think about, I ain't going to say that now. Now I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice, y'all. I'll be nice. No. (laughs) That's right. Every religion, there's a lot of them out there, they require a whole lot of discipline. Christianity is almost on the bottom on the list. Why well, folks just would come in when they won't. I'm trying to be nice, y'all. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead. I know my wife will see. That's why my wife needs to be down here. I got her doing something right now, guys. Normally she's here. She can tell me, watch yourself, honey. Before I moved here in '95, we used to go to football games, right? And that's it. Football, we enjoyed the game, and we went on. Not until I moved south that I got among the HBCUs that I started experiencing what? (laughs) I got another one of my ministers sitting right here. You tell me when to stop. We had so much fun. We ate so much food and had so much fun. Up north, I had never been around that amount of many black folk and somebody didn't get killed. So don't forget, I'm from Detroit. We always fought. And, and, and I, it was amazing how they would come, depending on what school you play, like Southern, They'll get there a day day or two before everything. It's amazing. Just to tailgate. Some of y'all trying to figure out where I'm going with this. It's amazing. Out of all the other religions, Christianity have the, the, the least discipline. And now here we are, Christians, right? And we went to the football games tailgating. Wow. 
what, an hour before game start? Two hours? No, we were there two hours before the game start. We were going because of who I was, my position, Pastor Bishop. We had all the churches on us, all that, right? Everybody wanted me to taste their food. I knew a lot of folk, still do. Come on over here, Bishop. Come on, get this. Did that, me and the wife. We were, yeah, you. <laughs> we was tasting everybody because everybody knew us, you know what I mean? Introducing us to other people. I mean, they took us to the real deal, man. It was like, and all this happened before the game. They would do all that before the game. That requires a lot of discipline. To get there, you know the game gonna be two and a half, three hours. And you're going to get there an hour or two before it starts. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. No. No, I think you get the picture. Just a thought. Just a thought. I was just thinking. Oh, man, yesterday I watched that game. It was so many folk in that stadium. Wow. And a ton of them were there two hours before the game started. Just to watch certain situations happen. Watch that band. I love the band. Me, me and my wife, we were... Shoot, we were throwing up a little something, something. You know, the band had their thing. Was, man, we ain't never heard nothing like that. We ain't never heard the sonic boom and the HBCU band. And, you know, they got the cheerleaders going. And you got them other, what them guys? Don't, don't. Oh, yeah, that, that's what they call them, drum majors. That joker going up, doing, I can't do all what they be doing. Me and the wife, our, our eyes were that big. Whoa, look at, look at that joker. Had that big old thing in his hand. <laughs> then they had all the other stuff going. Like, whoa. This is having lots of fun. People were excited. And then when they got through, then they would march to go up in the stands. And we was like, why is everybody looking over there when all the players is over here? Because the band doing their thing going up them stairs, you know. So I turned around and looked. I was like, whoa, so much excitement, so much energy. Then they had folk down there dancing and this and that, a lot of energy, excitement. And they got there an hour or two before the game, John. And, whoa, everybody's excited. Everybody throwing up the food. People getting ready a week before it. I went and bought my gear. I still got all that old gear from Jackson State. Oh, honey, we, whoa, we, we bought jackets. I'm talking about them big jackets. We got all that stuff. Had several me. I'm a hat guy. Had about two or three or four hats. Follow me. To do what? To represent. You know, I'm, I'm a U of M fan. I'm U of M Bochum Beckler fan. The big house, 115,000 fans up at U of M. But man, when I come down here, it's like, whoa, what an experience. Whew. For a football game. Beautiful. Glorious. Wow. It blew me and my wife's mind. It blew us up. We started to go into all the games. Mess around, got season tickets. People started looking out for us. We was getting season tickets, this, that, sitting right near the players. I could reach over and touch the helmet. Because we enjoyed it. So we invested in it. So then we started sowing seed for black kids to go to Jackson State. We started handing out scholarship money. Our church gave over $10,000. So the kids could attend. We bought into it. I don't know where I'm going with this. I hadn't planned on saying none of this. I'm just painting a picture here. Yeah, we got there an hour or two before the game, before the game got started. Wow. Because we bought into it. Let's 
get back to our lesson. Your heart is extremely valuable. Guard the gates that lead to your heart. Your heart determines your quality of life. The state of our heart determines the actions that we take in our lives. The state of our heart determines the actions that we take in our lives. Our heart serves as the gatekeeper of our lives. Our heart is something about that heart. It, it, it's you. It, it's you. When we guard our heart, I hope y'all get this. When we guard our heart, we're shielding and protecting our lives, our beliefs, our attitudes, our thoughts, and our actions. When we guard our heart, yeah, we're shielding and protecting what? Our personal lives, our beliefs, our attitudes, our thoughts and actions. Our goal should be to guard our heart so that we can become fully submitted to God. It's, it's hard to get totally committed until you submit. Submit means submit, come under a mission. You got to come under something before you commit to something. You got to come under a mission before you submit to a mission or a vision. You got to buy into it. I said you got to buy into it. And, and until you buy into it, I'd have never bought the JSU gear. I went downtown. What's that one main street? They got that one store down there. Uh, you got the bus station right there. You got that one little street, the little hole in the wall, little store right there. They, man, they had all the gear. I don't even know if they still open now. I think they are. I mean, you name it, they got sorority stuff, attorney stuff, this, that. They had all the JSU gear up in there, man. My, my wife and I, we busted up in there. We started to start, watch this. And it didn't matter how much money we were spending because we were sold into it. We didn't come in there and how much is this? Oh, no, I want that. My wife and I, we got all that gear. Oh, track suits, honey, what? I bought, we, we bought track suits, the big, the big jacket with the different years or something on it. Because we bought into it. Yeah. I hadn't planned on saying all this. It just came, yeah. All right, now let's talk about these gates. Yeah. Number one, there are three gates. Eye gate, ear gate, and your mouth gate. These are the gates we got to guard. Number one, your eyes. Be careful what you see and focus in on. These gates lead to your heart, and your heart determines your life what kind of life that you're going to have. So it's some three gates you got to guard because if you allow it to get past them guards, it'll get into your heart and it will determine the type of life that you're going to live. So number one, your eyes. You got to be careful what you allow your eyes to see. As I told you last week, there were things I wish I'd have never seen. Do I have a witness in here? Are there things that maybe you wish you'd have never seen? Now some folks, I ain't raising my hand. Be honest. That's another problem with Christians. They don't want to be honest. There are things in your life you wish you'd have never heard or seen. Because it affects you. And it didn't affect me. Uh, let's move on. We ain't got time for that, you know. Jesus understood the power of images. He knew that what we take in through our eyes had the power to fill us with either light or darkness. And we wonder why, let's say, some of our kids are the way they are, and now they're grown or what, whatever. Come on, let's go back to watching them spooky movies. Now, I just turned 60 this year, so I grew up with Freddy Krueger. I grew up with Night of the Living Dead. I grew up with Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. We grew up with all that, the movie Carrie. There were a number of spooky movies back in that day. And boy, we used to get so scared. Woo-wee! Man, I went to go see Night of the Living Dead. What we do that for? Man, it took me two or three days to get my mind. I was a kid. I had to be about 12 or 13. It jacked me up. I was so scared. 
But notice here, there are three gates that lead to your heart. And number one, you better watch what you're looking at. One of the, one of the number one uh, addictions today is the Internet. It did messed up a lot of folks. It has helped a lot of people. But if you're watching the wrong thing, it will destroy you. Because you'll want more and more and more and more and more and more and more. You got to be careful. My wife and I, we went to go see a movie a couple of years ago. And, and shoot, the first five minutes, it wasn't even five minutes, first two minutes, they were doing stuff that was unlawful for me to utter. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that, but you know, sounded good. Sounds spiritual, you know. It was just unlawful for me to utter. And we got up and left. I, it, it was deep. We thought we were going to see a Western movie. I love Westerns. Yeah. Oh, no, they started doing, whoa, whoa, oh. You tell it, it ain't right when everybody get quiet. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about in the theater. Whoa. They, they didn't even leave it up to your imagination. They went there and went there. I said, man, this should have been rated X. I, oh, I said, honey, let's go. Now, I could have sat there and lied and said, I'm going to close my eyes. Watch that. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, I'm closing my eyes. You ain't closing your eyes. You got one of them half open. Why? Because you want to see something. Right? Okay, everybody looking straight ahead. That's good. But Jesus understood the power of images. He knew that what we take in through our eyes has the power to fill us with light or darkness. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Are y'all still with me? Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. You got to be careful. Remember, you got to guard our heart because if you don't, you're going to allow disturbance to come in. And it'll take you on a journey. It's like, whoa, I ain't planning on going this far. Whoa, I, ain't, I wasn't planning on spending this much. Whoa. That's how life is. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22, said, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness, these are the words of Jesus. The whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be dark, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters. You either hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Another translation says, your eyes is the lamp of your body. That's why Jesus understood the power of images. How about Matthew chapter 5, verse 28? Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. I can tell you right now, I ain't going to finish this today. I'm almost done now. We're going to keep it going because this is a very important series. Verse 28, Jesus said, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh at a woman to lust after her, he's already committed adultery. And all he did was just look, looking with the wrong intentions. Verse 29, Jesus said, if your right eye offended, pluck that bad boy out. Cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of your members should perish. Come on. And not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. You got to watch what you're looking at. That's that eye gate. Got to be careful, because what you see, it'll get down inside your heart. How about Psalms 119? I ain't got time to wait on y'all now. Just jot the scripture down. Psalms 119, verse 37. It said, turn away my eyes from beholding vanity. One translation says, turn your eyes from beholding sin and quicken thou me in thy way. So we got to turn our eyes away from sin. Be careful what we watch and look at in life. We got to be careful with television, movies, computer, telephone, and internet. Have you ever noticed now that the kids are not watching a lot of television? Now they're watching stuff on their telephone. Have y'all parents noticed that now? 
You need to be alert and watchful what your kids are looking at. They're watching a lot of stuff, YouTube, tell, uh, you know, forget the TV. You're like, hey, when the last time you watched TV? They barely even watch TV. They watch everything on their phones now. And that's how addictions get started. Come on, guys, I need you. I'm, I'm about done. Watch this. Adult problems are youth problems never solved. Some of us adults here, if we could be honest with you, we'll tell you why certain things happen in our life. We saw certain things. Come on. We heard certain things, and it took root in us. Come on. It, it, it took. And it's, and it's been bothering you ever since. It may have happened when you were 12. May have happened when you were 10. May have happened when you were 16, 18, 19. That's why we got to guard our heart. Got to be, and one way to do that is watch what you allow your eye gates to see. Okay? Be careful what you're watching. Uh, why? Because the television tells a vision. It conveys, watch this now, there's something about the television or movies, computers, telephone, and internet. Oh my God. Especially nowadays. Man, we went to go just see a, a simple cartoon type situation and they're conveying thoughts and ideas that ain't got nothing to do with the cartoon. It's like, what, why y'all throw that in? I'm t let's just say, I'm just here to see Bugs Bunny. That's it. They want to start throwing in situations and ideas. I'm not here for that. Why? Because this media thing, let me tell you what it does. It tells a vision. Listen, parents, young people, some of you teenagers, listen. It tells a vision. It conveys philosophies, beliefs, ideas, theories. You know, we live in a time now where, man, there's so many theories. It's, it's nuts out here. It's crazy. Theories and concepts. Uh, my family and I, just this summer, uh, we was at uh, a, a, what was it this summer or last summer, we was at a picnic, family reunion picnic, right? And, and, and uh, I'm not going to name no names, all that. Well, we were there, my brother and I, we did the cooking, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. We just wanted to make sure family come together, right? So I look over there and I look at a couple of my kids uh, and, and, and another one of my relatives I ain't never met young man and it's well I gotta be careful because I don't know he might be watching <laughs> you know he was in the middle 20s uh, of age as it were you know was trying to uh, get a couple of my loved ones youngsters to go look at a site s-i-t-e I don't know if it was on television or on the telephone. Probably on the telephone. You click into a site, and there it is. You'll see philosophies and ideas and pictures and this and that. I caught it out the corner of my eye while I was cooking. I'm watching everybody. Everybody, even family. I ain't stupid. I'm not ignorant and naive. I'm watching everything. I don't see how these parents go. Your child in there creating a nuclear bomb in the garage and you didn't know they were doing it. You got got, got 50,000 pounds of horse manure and, and this and that and, and all this 12 weapons, this, that. And you gonna tell me you didn't know nothing? You didn't understand nothing was going on at your house? I ain't trying to hear that. Well, I was raised, mama knew everything. Mama checking underwear. When she cleaned it, she checking underwear. Mama checking everybody out, even daddy. She checking him out. See, we didn't change to the wrong way. We, we, I don't know what's wrong with us. I don't know what's wrong with this society nowadays. Mama knew everything going down, and she was a Holy Ghost woman, so that she had the advantage, too. She checking everything. Underwear, ain't no locking doors to your room, all this, unless you aren't dressing. There ain't no locking doors. What's up in there? What's, what's going on in here? And you don't even want daddy to walk in. 
Oh, my Lord. But now, I, 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 I got rights. You got a right to open the door up. That's what you got a right to do. So, uh, let's get back to the picnic, right? Other than that, you know, telling, you know, my son and grandson, go to this site or this, that. He done got caught up into some stuff I ain't gonna name that's messing up a lot of black kids. Go check this out. And earlier that day, he over there doing cantations and all this kind of stuff. We was watching. I, and he won't come with my kids and it ain't happening. Did, did he give you a little piece of paper with some information? Give it here. Tear it up. You're not going to get my child jacked up, linked into some mess. Then they go in there, link in to that site, or go on YouTube and link in, and there it go, conveying ideas and thoughts and all that. It's getting into their little heart. That's how a lot of kids wind up jacked up. And you trying to figure out, Oh, how did that happen? Well, you was at the family reunion. That's why it happened. And it got into their heart and took root. And you trying to, why didn't I, like my daddy used to say, things were different back then. Daddy, is you crazy? Hey, see, you can't say all that today because kids take that to heart and all that and fall out, go and do something crazy behind you saying that, you know. Have you lost your mind? Well, they add a little cuss word to it back then, too. And then say, now let's go to church. <laughs> Boy, times were different back then. Boy, them kids, whoo, mama and them will cuss you out. And then let's go to church. But I, I'm telling you, we talking about guard your heart. We talking about guard your heart. You got to be careful. And Jesus knew it. He knew it. Because, see, your heart, it determines your lifestyle. It determines what kind of life that you're going to live. That's why when we watch some scary movies, we used to be scared. Of <laughs> Look out. Whoa, wait a minute. You know, we, you know, we didn't left the movie. We didn't saw Night of the Living Dead. And you go to go to sleep, right? And so you put your clothes up on the rack, right? And then your coat up there or something you know, inside your room. And then you, that looked like that Night of the Living Dead man on that wall. Man, that's your clothes, dude. Turn the light on. Your clothes start looking like the devil or stuff. Your clothes looking like somebody. Gah, 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 gah. Then we went and saw the movie Carrie. She was in the shower, right? And then you saw the blood everywhere, right? So now you're scared to go in the shower. Now you're supposed to close the shower door. I'm leaving it open. You got water flying all in the floor because you... Y'all don't want me to get real with this thing. I'll break you off something up in here. We you scared to go in the shower? Are you? Do I got the witnesses up in here? Do I got anybody that? Oh, that scary movies don't scare me. All right, you keep on with your bad self. That fear kicks in. All of a sudden, now your child's scared of everything. Scared of everything. I mean, scared. Then you got to be careful when you're taking your kids over somebody's house. If they full of all them fears, it'll get off into your kid. Now, your kids will be scared of everything because it then got in their heart. You trying to figure out where it all at. It might have been the babysitter. Might have been your, your aunt and uncles now that's full of fear. Now, your child full of fear. Might be them. They at their house watching all that mess. With, you don't allow it in your house, but they allow it in theirs. And you're trying to figure out, where did my child pick this spirit up at? Why are they trying to do this? And why are they trying to do that? How did they twist or flip the script or this or that or whatever? How did all that? But nobody said nothing. What you constantly look at is what you will eventually become with time. What you constantly look at, but you got to be so careful. We're talking about guard them gates. And we only got time just to cover this one gate today. Did y'all get something out of this? Yeah. This is for us adults, for our kids, for our relatives, everything. You got to be so careful. And you know, 
young folk, I love y'all so big. Let me tell you, I done seen some stuff I wish I'd have never seen. It's like, whoa, Lord. And so, you be careful. Look here. <laughs> we were on the mission field. We was in Bulgaria. That's right next to Russia. We was over there helping people, right? And when we got to the hotel, very nice hotel, right? I'm going to close with this. And, and, and I went into my hotel room, right? Nice hotel, brand new. I mean, this thing was nice. Now, where we went to do mission work, it wasn't like that. But, you know, we Americans, I ain't no missionary, but we went to hell. We was in Sofia, Bulgaria, right? Which is the capital in which we found out what Sofia meant. Some kind of goddess. I'm going to leave that alone. So I start putting two and two together. Okay. So that, and they got it right in the town hall. Sophia, the goddess. So we, we are mature pastors. It was about seven of us. And we started reading into this. Hmm. You got the Sophia goddess up in here. Okay. So, the, so we know what to look for on the mission field. So we get to the room, right? And, you know, when you didn't travel, oh, man, we went from, let's see, Mississippi to New York. We flew New York to Germany, Germany to another spot. And then we got to Bulgaria. That's how far, about four flights just to get there. So we get there. We're in the hotel. You know, you want to relax now, right? Take a shower, the whole nine yards. Am I right? Turn the TV on, right? Turn the TV on. Whoa! Flick to the next channel. Oh, Lord! Next channel. Woo, Jesus. Next channel. Oh, no. Shut it off. Just about every single channel. I'm looking for sports. Some, you know, just, or, or, or Western. You know, I like that little grit channel with Western, old Western. Stuff. Just something simple. I'm tired, man. We've been on the plane. I don't know how many hours. 15, 16 hours on the plane. That's it. So you know what I did? I said, oh, no. I ain't picking up no devil here. I call the front desk. Can y'all just shut everything off in here? Well, sir, we don't know that we... I just unplugged the whole daggone television set because you get tempted. Whether you a preacher or no preacher, it don't make no difference. Now you got to determine, do I want to turn this on? Watch just a little bit. Just one Krispy Kreme. Just one little Lay's potato chip. Next thing you know, you're too involved. Next thing you know, you done picked up a devil. Now you're trying to shake it. Now you got issues. We go down to breakfast the next morning, right? Everybody, all the pastors at the table, everybody quiet. You know, probably tired and all that, right? I say, hey, guys, you know me, I'm going to break the ice. Man, I turned the TV on, they all start laughing. <laughs> now, I didn't ask what they did. I'm quite sure they did what I did. But everybody started laughing. I knew right then and there. I said, fellas, I unplugged my television set. I asked the people at the front, can you just turn off cable in my room, something? I, just shut all this mess down. Careful what you see. Because what I saw there was holy mackerel. It was very, very unorthodox. And right there, the decision had to be made which way I'm going to go with it. Because it's going to be that first thought that come to you that will hold you captive. That's why you give Satan no. You got to make a decision. It's that first thought. I'm done now. If you ain't learned nothing else from this message today, it's that first thought you got to hold captive. Because it's going to be that first thought that'll try to take root. Yeah, yeah. And that's why when, when my wife and I, we counsel people, we have a heart for people. We get it. We get it. And, and, and people, if I just allow them to talk for five or ten minutes, just five or ten minutes, you can see where they picked up them spirits. If you just talk to them and let them talk, 
they'll begin to unveil to you why they are the way they are. Whether you're talking about those type of demons, spirits, or whether you're talking about other spirits, spirit of fear, addicted to power, there's all kind of addiction. You can understand where people come from. And we sympathize with people, but then we get to the word with them. Because you can't counsel a demon. I'm not calling a person a demon. That spirit, you can't counsel. There's only one thing you do with a demon, and that's cast it out. And so we have a heart with you. We understand that. Because once that spirit kick in, that's why you got you to cast it down immediately. No! No! I'm not doing that. No! And you can see it a mile off, too. You can see it. So anytime you go to Europe, you're going to see some stuff that is so ungodly on that television. When you get to the, the Europe, they're all out that way. South America, Europe, uh, there's some wild stuff out there. A lot of missionaries who got a heart of gold for God wind up addicted. And, now, and they're out there to reach souls, but they get caught in situations and they didn't, they should have caught. That's why I like Billy Graham. Billy Graham said something I'll never forget. He said, wherever he go, he always had an assistant with him, a man. And before he go into his room, they check under the beds. They check everything. Isn't that crazy? You got to check your rooms. Because there were situations where folk was up in there for the wrong reason. Because they knew that man was very well known throughout the entire world. That he was coming and they put situations in there to make him fall. He always had an assistant with him. And I got my wife back there. I think until this day, one of his top assistants, I think, is buried next to him. Or they have a grave plot that he will be next to Billy Graham. If you go to Charlotte, North Carolina, you can see what I'm talking about. And they tell the story. He always had somebody with him. Why? Give Satan no place. Some of us give Satan place, let me tell you, and most people will fall. I don't care if you're a bishop, pope, I don't care, rebel, righteous rebel, I don't care who you are, you're going to fall. I don't care how long you pray, you're going to fall with time. So you give Satan no place, no topos, no topography. you got to guard them eyes. Next week, we're going to talk about ears. And then you got to be careful what comes out your mouth because it goes to your heart. Then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Well, y'all get something out of this today? Just trying to help you. Amen. Praise God. Some of you finally understand. Oh, I see what happened to me now. That's right. So now you know. Guard the minds. Guard the minds. We were in Mexico <laughs> with my wife, Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's been a long day. We're doing stuff, all that. And, you know, I go to the big picture window to look out. And look out there. They got a big swimming pool. Big one, you're right. Hey, you got folk out there. Ain't wearing no clothes. Come on now. you in Mexico now. Some of y'all done been there. You know what time it is. I looked at my wife. I said, Lord, they dangling everywhere. <laughs> Unbelievable. You're in Mexico. No, we were in Jamaica. That's what it was. We were in Kingston, Jamaica on mission. We were doing some, and I, you know, I, we wake it up. I go to the window, look out, pull the curtain, and uh, oh, Lord, I tell you. They say Americans can't handle it. Even when we went to Bulgaria, we talking about mission trips. I don't want to scare you from missions because I love missions. They had nude beaches. Some of us pastors, they, I didn't know nothing about all of them. They laugh at it. I do no. They say Americans can't handle it. But the people back out in Europe, back out that way, no problem. It's no biggie. You got to guard them eyes. You got to be careful. 
Got to be careful. Yeah. Got to be careful around your families, relatives. Got to be very careful. Perhaps there's someone here that don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm here to pray with you today. Maybe you've fallen and you feel like you can't get back up. Oh, you can get back up. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. God understands. And that's why you're getting this teaching today, so that you can grow up, so that you can develop. Just think if you'd have been getting this kind of teaching for the last 10 years. Boy, you'd be so much further ahead. You'll be so much more mature in the things of God. But when you don't know and ain't nobody ever taught you, things happen in life. And so I know that's why when people come and we counsel people, we get it. Yeah, and you know, when they open themselves up they're, and they're leaving their doors open and the windows open for Satan to come in, that's right, all hell is a coming. We get it. We, we understand it. So when you come for counseling, we'll be ministering to you how to close those doors. That's all. Build you back up again because God's going to still use you. The best is yet to come in your life. God loves you. So if there's someone here today you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and you want me to pray with you today, I would love to pray with you today in the name of Jesus. You know, the Word of God says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and if thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, raised Jesus from the dead, said thou shalt be saved. Verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I know we got people watching by way of Facebook, YouTube, all that. We want to pray with you today in the name of Jesus. Even those who are right here today where heads are bowed, eyes are closed, if that's you today and you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, hey, I want to pray with you today. If that's you, raise your hand. Is there someone here? Say, Pastor, hey, that's me, man. I need Jesus in, in my life. I've been going to church, but I never accepted Christ. Secondarily, there might be someone here to say, Pastor, I'm born again, but I'm not in fellowship. I've slipped up over here and I messed up over there. It's okay. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that God is just and able to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If that's you today, I want to pray with you as well. Then there might be someone to say, I have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We want to pray with you as well. We got counselors who are going to sit down with you and pray with you. Amen, that you can receive. And then finally, there might be someone here to say, Pastor, I need a church home. Man, I've learned more today than I learned in years of being at church. I'd like to know a little bit more of what i got to do to become a member here. Now, by you putting your hand up, that don't make you a member. All you're saying is, I am interested. I'm, I'm interested. And you have to go through the class. After you go through those four little classes, then if you so desire, you can become a member. So, there were several invitations. Number one, are you born again? I'm not sure about that, Pastor. Number two, I am born again, but I'm not in fellowship. I need to get back in fellowship. Number three, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Signs and evidence of speaking in tongues. And number four, I need a church home. So if that's you today, my heads are bowed, eyes are closed, I want you to lift your hand. If that's you, lift your hand now. Is there someone here for salvation, for rededication? Is there someone here? You want to get back in fellowship? You're looking for a good church home? Come on now. If that's you, I want to pray with you today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And those of you that's watching by way of Facebook, I'm going to say a simple prayer with you today. I'm going to invite you to pray along with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord. Everybody join in with me. And Father, I just want to say thank you. Lord, I've tried to live my life. It just didn't work out, Lord. And Lord, right now, I submit my life to you. I just heard in your word, you said, Lord, if I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead, you said, Lord, I'll be born again. So right now, I call upon you 
I accept you right now as my Lord, Savior, and Master. And I believe that God raised you from the dead on the third day. I accept you now into my life. Lord, do something wonderful with my life. Amen. Praise the Lord, man. We're so excited for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I trust that you enjoyed today. We had a lot going on, all the different mission work, and we're continuing. We're going to go out there and buy some more big cases of water. We're probably going to get another 20 cases, well, pallets. We'll get probably another 20 pallets of water. Oh, yeah. We're going to keep helping people on Fridays and Saturdays. We're going to keep helping the public schools, the senior citizen homes, uh, seniors who can't get out. They want us to bring it to them. We're going to keep doing this. And so I just want to thank you guys for being a part of this today. In the name of Jesus. Well, glory to God. It's time to give. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you desire an offering envelope, raise your hand. There should be an offering envelope right there on your chair. Amen. Praise God. You know, the, the Word of God teaches us to give, and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So men give to our bosom. Amen. Praise God. That's so very important that we give so that we continue to buy pallets of water, so that we can continue to do the work of the ministry. Amen. Praise God. You know, the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving. Glory to God. Now, we encourage you. There are three ways that we encourage you to give. Number one, PayPal. You can go to newbeginningspluralclc.org, newbeginningspluralclc.org, or you can go to Cash App, and that's at New Beginnings Plural CLC. Amen. Or just simply just mail it in. P.O. Box 320658. Again, P.O. Box 320658. That's Flowood, Mississippi 39232. Amen. Praise God. Oh, I tell you, God is good. Ah, the my gates. Ah, you got to shut that thing down. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, there are situations when, hey, you didn't invite it in and it happened. Well, there will be an anointing for you to resist. But you can't subject yourself to a situation then and say, I'll bind you. <laughs> you can't do that. But when you are in situations where it was out of your control, the anointing will be there for you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Is, is there someone that need an offering envelope? Again, make all checks payable to New Beginnings. Make all checks payable to New Beginnings. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, we thank you, Lord Jesus. All right. How many of y'all hungry? <laughs> I'm hungry, too. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we do come to the honor and the privilege to give this day. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, you'll give back to us good measure, pressed down, second together, running over, so men give to our bosom. And Father, we just claim right now the benefits of a tither, that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive it. And Father, we thank you, oh, that you'll rebuke the devourer for our sake. And Lord, we thank you that as we give, it'll cause new beginnings to continue to enlarge its tents so that we can reach out to a lost and dying world with the glorious gospel. Ministering spirits, go forth now and cause our return to come unto us. For we believe that we receive a hundredfold return in this lifetime. Wealth and riches will be in our house. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I tell you, we, we've had a good time here today. Oh, my goodness. It's been good today. God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Don't forget, men, this coming Saturday. Minister Logan, you can come up. Uh, this coming Saturday is what? This coming Saturday is what? And that's for young men, not just, you know, I mean, hey, 12 and up, teenagers, just bring your kids. Come on, fellas. Bring your boys with you. Be good for them. Be good for them. This Saturday, I'll be here. 
It starts at 10 o'clock. I believe it's 10 o'clock. Is that right? This coming Saturday, we got our men's fellowship. We're having a big breakfast. You name it, we're going to have it. And when we cook, we cook a whole lot of it. So, men, don't forget about that. Minister Logan, she got some outreach projects going on. If you don't quite get it, get a booklet. We got booklets out there that'll tell you what's going on. Amen. Minister Logan. Praise the Lord. Before we um, um, receive our offering, just a reminder, if after the offering you can be dismissed. As Pastor said, don't forget about the men breakfast. Amen. Praise God. And don't uh, forget about our outreaches that are coming up. Again, look at the booklet out there. It gives you details of what uh, we need for that. Thank you so much in advance for what you're doing. If you... Uh, uh, Pastor already did the offering, but if you would uh, raise your offering up, I'm going to pray over your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving us seed to sow, and as we give, you promised in your word that you would give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall me and give unto our bosom. We thank you, Lord God, that angels, Father, we release them now to go forth and bring us that which we have need of, not just for ourselves, but also for the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Uh, so now uh, uh, you follow the directions of our ushers, and they went straight.